Hello and welcome to this course. This course is about Next.js. We are going to see how Next.js differs from React.js and all the features that comes with Next.js. We are going to see how to render our page components on the server, how to communicate with our database inside our Next.js application. We are also going to see how we can route through pages inside Next.js. And with this, we are going to build a dummy project where we're going to write Express.js server-side code, connect to a MongoDB database. And at the end of this course, at the end of this tutorial, you should have known at least the features that Next.js offers and how you can use it to build exciting projects for yourself. So for us to be able to create a Next.js project with Tailwind pre-configured, for that I am in the official documentation of Tailwind CSS. So I'm going to copy the command, go back to my command prompt, already navigated into the folder where I want to create this project. I'll paste it and I'm going to change the name. So instead of my project, we are going to use something like Next.js Crash Course. Now you could name this anyhow you want. And once we are done, I'm going to hit enter. What this does is this now creates a Next.js project with Tailwind CSS already configured. So right now it's going to install all the dependencies of our project. And once it's done, because this is going to take some time, I'm going to come back and give us a brief walkthrough the project that was generated for us automatically using that uh, command. So I'll see you once it's done. So our project is done. Next, I'm going to do is I'm going to CD into the created project, which we call Next.js course, and I'll open it up with my code editor. So this is the project that Next.js gives us. We have the node modules folder, which contains the dependencies of our projects. Those dependencies are stored in the package or JSON. That's where we see the dependencies React next and react dom which is the which is the browser version of react js that is for for react dom so, and they are stored in the node modules folder we also have the package log json so the package log json stores the log versions of these dependencies that were installed for us so if we get to share our file and we run npm install we are going to install the same actual version as this project so that's the work of the package log json we also now have the public folder and the pages folder. Now, the public folder is where we store files that we save statically, such as images. And the pages folder is a very important folder. It's a folder we are going to use a lot in this project. So as we progress through the course, we are going to walk through the pages folder. So going into the pages folder, the page folder is actually an important folder and in this pages folder we are going to see the file based routing that Next.js offers to us. Now the index.js part, the index.js file, this loads our root domain that is localhost 3000 slash. So if I open my terminal, already navigated into this folder and I run npm run dev. So running this command this is going to start our Next.js application on localhost 3000. So now our project loads up on localhost 3000. So now this loads up the Next.js project. And what we can see is the content of the files that we have in our index.js. So the index.js file is an important file. So we can go on and delete the API folder. API folder, we are going to get back to the API when we are to integrate a node.js backend into our project and then we have the underscore app.js now we see tailwind css is automatically imported for us that with the command we ran earlier and then we have this my app this function is the first function the first file that gets called when next.js bootstraps our project and now it receives the component and the page props as props now the page props are the props for our different pages and we have our component and it returns that our component is made up of 
the different pages so the different contents of our files the different contents of the files that we have in our pages folder and then it passes down the page props to those components so going back to our index.js to make things simple i'm going to delete the content of this index.js file and in there we are going to declare a function you can give it any name you like for instance we'll say home page and inside this function we are going to return a h1 that says there that says home page and we must always export the default home page now we don't need to import react from react because automatically next.js adds that for us if we go back to our browser we see home page coming from the index.js now let's go on and say we are building a blog we are going to have three pages now we are going to have first of all the home page so let's go on and create another page and we can do this by either creating a file in this format and we are going to call this page the addblog.js now this is the page that will be loaded up for when we want to add a new blog to our application and here we are going to declare a function called addblog and inside that function we are also going to return dummy data for now we'll just return h1 that says add blog and we are going to export default the add blog function now for request going to our domain slash add blog this file is going to be loaded up the add blog file so if we go to our browser and we visit localhost 3000 slash add blog we load the add blog page so this now explains the power of file based routing why it is more superior in react.js so another way we can do this instead of declaring a file is to create a folder a folder and we name the folder add blog now inside this folder we are going to move this add blog file in there and we are going to rename it to be called index.js so when a request reaches localhost 3000 slash add blog this same file is going to be loaded so if we go back to our browser we still see the same content now moving on apart from the add blog page we definitely need a blog detail page a dynamic page how do we do this so we do this by using square brackets and inside the square brackets we are going to add an identifier for this page and in our case we are going to use log now inside this log we have to also write the content the jsx we're also going to call it blog details so we'll declare a function called blog details and inside the function we are also going to return dummy data for now we just say h1 that says the blog details page and we shouldn't forget to export this function as the default so export default blog details so for request coming to localhost 3000 slash now any dynamic parameter is going to load this log.js file so if we go back and then we say slash localhost 3000 slash slash news this is going to load the blog details page so any dynamic request is going to come here even if we say slash add blog and if we go back to slash add blog next.js would not load the dynamic path because it already knows that we have defined that route so next.js is kind of smart so if we now view the page source we can see another advantage of next.js we have the content of this page so web crawlers can easily search through our website and know the content of our website now this is good for seo but in normal react app all we just have is the div with the id of root so now this is how we load dynamic path in next.js and this shows you the power of next.js so another way we could do this is by using the folder style so we create a folder and we call it slug but it has to be in square brackets we move the content of this log file inside this log folder and we then rename that file to be the index.js so any request reaching our domain slash and then any dynamic path is going to load 
is log the tells page. So if we go to localhost 3000 slash 2, it still loads the log details page. So this is Firebase routing and how we use it in Next.js. So moving on, let's go on and add our own font. So I'll go over to the browser and quickly navigate to fonts.google.com. So once the page opens up, I'll go and search for font and the font we are going to be using will be Montserrat. So we'll click on it and uh, we slow down and we select a style. For this, I'm going to be using 400 regular. So now this gives us the link. So we'll copy this link and this link will be used in our next JS application. Remember, we are using Tailwind CSS for our styling and in order to use that font, we need to make Tailwind to be informed. But first of all, we go over to our index.cs file and in our home page, we are going to import head from next head. Now this head, as we know in HTML, we use head to write metadata about our website. So now this metadata can contain things like links as well. So we are going to, first of all, use head and we write you use the head like this and in it we are going to paste the link that we just got from google font now we are going to make this link a self-closing tag and up next in order for us to add content to this page we are going to import fragment from react so that this will enable us to have multi-line jsx so we are just going to use the fragment to wrap our component and wrap the whole component with the fragment tag. So now we can come below our head section, H1 that says the home page. So now with this, we have been able to add fonts, but if we should go back to our page, maybe close out from Google fonts and we reload, we still see that our font is not yet in use. So in order for us to apply our font, we need to do some more setup now with Tailwind CSS. So we'll go to our tailwind.config.js file and inside the team, now we're going to add a font family and inside the font family, it takes in an object and inside the object, we are going to target sans and sans takes in an array and an array, we are going to specify the fonts we want to use in our case, we are going to specify Montserrat like this. And as a fallback, we are going to be using sans serif. So at this point, if we should save, we go back to the browser and we reload, we see that Montserrat has been applied. We see the H1 is of Montserrat. So now let's look at navigation in Next.js. How do we navigate? First off, I'll close all tabs to keep things clean. So let's go to our slug page. So this, since this is a dynamic page, let's look see how we can get information about the path from the URL that we are currently navigated on. That's the dynamic path. So in order to do this, we need to import something from next router. And that something is a hook, which is called the use router hook. Now this use router hook is not built into React.js. So it's a Next.js feature. And to use it, we are going to initialize a constant called router. We are going to say it is equal to the use router hook called as a function. So let's go on and log this use this router to the console and see what's actually inside of it. So we go over to our browser and we navigate to the to a dynamic path. Let's call it best quote. 
we open up our console. And here we see an object, actually two objects, because the first time the page loads, we don't have data about it. You can see the path is just as log, as path is just log, and the path is empty with a query object that is empty. Now, because this is how Next.js feature is, it first of all loads when the page data is not available, and it reloads when it now has data for the page. So we can see as path is slash best quote, but now most important for us is the query object. And inside the query object, we have slug because we named its log and the, the value of slug is the best quote. So the name slug is coming from the identifier that we used in our app. So we also have the push function, which is used to navigate programmatically. So the push function takes the URL of the page we want to push the user to. So let's go back to our application and we'll log router.query. Now it reloads and we see this log. So router.query gives us an object. So inside that object, we have the identifier of our page route, which is log, and the value is, the, is what we have on the URL bar. We want to get information concerning the ID or this log that we have on the URL bar. So we know that we are getting it from router.query dot slog. So now this is going to give us the actual URL. That is the name, the identifier that the user is on. For now, I'm just going to remove it. I just wanted to give you a heads up on the use router link. And we are going to use it, the use router hook. And we are going to use it definitely in our project. So since we are at navigation, we are, it's time for us to build navigation. So I would go to the root folder of our app and I'm going to create a component folder. Now inside this component folder, we are going to create a navigation component. So we are going to create a new folder called navigation. And inside that folder, we are going to create a navigation.js file. Now, the idea is that this navigation component is going to serve as the navigation bar for our entire application. So let's get started by writing out the JSX. So as usual, we are going to have a function. Actually, it could not always be the function type. We can also use the arrow function. So we can say const navigation is equal to arrow function. And inside the, uh, the function body, we write our actual JSX. So inside the function body, we are going to return the navigation component. And we start by having a nav. Inside this nav element, we are going to have a UL. So the UL is going to have a class name. So we are going to give it a display of flex and a justify around. These are tailwind class names. So inside the UL, we are going to have the list items, which will be our navigation list items. So we are going to give the LI a class name of px4 to give it some padding on the horizontal axis and we're going to also give it a py of 2 to give it padding on the vertical axis so we're going to say font bold to make the, the text bold and we're also going to give it a text white that is to give it a text color of white so the li the background is also going to be blue so we're going to use bg blue 700 and we're going to give it rounded full that is to give it a peel a peel look also we are going to give it a class name of hover so on the hover state we are going to say hover the bg blue is going to be of 700 so these are tailwind class names so in order to navigate in next.js we are going to use the link the link is coming from next link and we use the link like we use our normal a tag now the link is going to have a content which is home 
so this link is going to take us to our home page and if we hover on the link we see the props it takes so we are going to be using the href prop and inside this href prop we are going to write the actual link that we want to navigate the user to and since we are using this link as our home page we are going to say href is equals to just slash so in order to use the link we go to our underscore app.js file and as i said earlier this is the first file that gets uh, loaded whenever next.js starts our application and we can make use of that because this returns the whole component in order for us to use our navigation component we need to import fragment from react because our navigation is always going to be on every page so we need to return multi-line JSX and in order to do that in react then we need to use the fragment to wrap our whole JSX with it so now we write our fragment So I'll quickly cut that and place the component inside it. And above it, I'll place our navigation component like that. So if we should save and go back to the browser, we see our navigation bar. And then we see the content of the home page there. So we can go further. If we go to any page we visit we see that we always render the navigation even if it is the dynamic page so the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to go back to our navigation and duplicate the li so we have another link and this time around it's going to be for adding a blog so i'll call this add blog but the href now is going to be slash add blog because that's what we called the name of the file in our pages folder. So this is now our navigation and you see we are actually navigating between the two pages, the add blog page and also the home page. We can go over to the UL and give it a background. Let's just give it a background gray of 300 so at least it's not um, totally white on the screen so with our navigation complete let's go on and render some dummy data some dummy blog post on our screen so i'll come top of our index.js file and i'll create a constant called blog post which is going to be an array of objects so each blog in our application is going to have an id a title so in this case i'm just going to say first blog and each blog is also going to have an image. So to get an image, I'll quickly go to the browser, go over to Unsplash and so I'll go over to Unsplash and I'll just pick um, any image at random. So I'll right click and copy image address. So we'll go back to our project and we'll, we'll paste the image link. Continue each blog post will also have a description. So in this case, I'm going to say, this is my first blog. Really excited. So let's just give it this content. And each blog is also going to have a detail so we are going to say details and we are going to say how it all began so now this can serve as our blog so i'm going to copy and paste just change the id of this to be two the title i'm going to say second second blog the image can remain the same and the description will say this is my second blog really excited and for the details we are just going to change it and we are going to say this blog is about next js
So now this is our dummy blog and we want to render it on our page. So in order to do that, maybe we'll just, we'll just keep the H1, but we are going to change it to blogs. And uh, below that, we are going to render a list of, well, our blog. So we'll go to a components folder and we'll create a, another component, which we'll call blog item. So the idea is this component is going to hold an individual blog item. So we'll just give it um, blog item.js. And inside, we are going to write our JSX for each individual blog item. So we are going to export the default blog item. Concerning the JSX for this blog item, we are going to have an opening div with a class name of max WSM. So now this gives it a max width of 24 rem. And we're also going to say MX auto to center the div. And then we are going to say overflow hidden. We're also going to give it a class name of rounded and shadow. So now this gives it a bit of um, border reduce and then shadow. And inside the div, we are going to have our image. Remember that each blog post contains an image and the class name for this image is going to be widthful. That means to take the full width of the container. We're going to give it a height of 60. And the image source is going to be coming from our props, but we'll just leave it for now. And the alt as well is going to come, come from our props. So we'll go up and then we are going to receive those props from the component. And using the structuring, we're going to say constant object is equals to props. And if we go back to our index.js, we can see that each block has a title, image, description, and details. So these are the properties that we are expecting these props to receive. So the title, image, also a description, and details. So we, we probably don't need the ID in this file. So I'm forgetting something, so we're getting the error. And um, let's continue. For the source, we are going to give it source image, the image we are getting, and for the alt, we are going to give it title. So the error is still there, and now I, I'm forgetting to return. You know, each React component is also always supposed to return JSX. So I'm going to return this div, and the error is gone. So below our image, we're also going to have another div. Now this div is going to be the is going to house the main blog content. So we're going to give it a class name of px6 that is padding on the x-axis. We are going to give it some padding on the y-axis of four. And inside this div, we are going to declare a another div with a class name of mb2 to give you some margin on the bottom and also text excel we're also going to make the font width bold and now inside the div we are going to dynamically render the title now below this div we are going to have a paragraph and this paragraph we are going to give it a class name of text base also going to give it a class name of text gray 700. And this paragraph is going to be the description for each individual blog. Now what's left is our button that is going to take us to the details page. So now after that um, div, we are going to have another div. And this div, we are going to give it a class name of text center. That is to center the button that we are going to place inside here and inside this div as i've said we are going to have a button and the, the content of this button is just going to say read more now let's actually start the button our button is going to have a padding on the x-axis of four padding on the y-axis of two also is going to have a font a font semi bold and we are going to give it a text and we are going to give it a text blue of 700. 
we are also going to make the background transparent with BG transparent and we are going to give it a border and we are going to say border blue that is to have a blue border so this is going to be a transparent button border blue 500 also we are going to make it rounded to make the border rounded and on the hover state of this button no this is a transparent button so when we hover we want to give it some background so we are going to say on hover bg blue is going to be 500 and also on hover we are going to give a text of white and still on the hover states we are going to say border transparent so now we are going to save and we are going to use this blog item in our index.js probably we are not using the details for now but let's just leave it in case we decide or in case we need it later so we go over to our index.js file and inside this index.js below our h1 let's actually change the h1 to be blog page so below our h1 we are going to dynamically render our blog item so we are going to say blog posts which is an array and then since an array we can map to it and when we map we get each individual blog we're just going to call it blog and we are going to return the blog item so don't forget to import blog item by going up one level into your components into the blog item and blog item so we are going to give this blog item a key and since our id is unique in this case we are going to use the id as a key and we are also going to pass the props that this blog item needs so starting with blog so let's go back and check the props it needs so it needs a title image description and details so we are going to give it a title which is going to be equal to blog.title we're also going to give it an image, which is going to be equal to blog.image. We're also going to give it a description, which is going to be equal to blog.description. And we're also going to give it details, so which is going to be equal to blog.details. So let's wrap the blog item into a div so that we can actually give it another styling so because we have given it an a opening div we are going to give it a key so the key is going to be equal to blog.id because the key is meant to be on the top level in react and also we are going to now give it a class name of flex so we are going to display each blog item as flex and then flex core because the default is row so we are going to give it flex core so that each block is going to be round up in is going to be a column so if we go from our splash and we reload our page, we see our blog item on the page. So let's actually style the button more. So we'll go over to our blog item and the div to start with, we're going to give it a margin Y of two so that they can be, to have some space between the blog post, to have some space between the blog post. And then let's give the button some styling. So if we reload, we now see that the button is no longer sitting on the foot of our application and we can still navigate between our different pages. With this, we are able to render normal React components in. We are done with the ad block form. I'll quickly collapse these other tabs. And in the blog item page, let's see how we can navigate programmatically. Now, navigating programmatically this is the blog item page so when we click we need to go to the slog page that is the page for each individual uh, blog post so in order for us to navigate nav programmatically we're going to import something from next router and obviously we all know what i want to import by now what we are going to use to navigate programmatically is our use router hook now remember that um, to use the use router hook, we're going to initialize a constant called router. We're going to say this is equal to our use router hook. Now on the router, on click of this button, on the read more button, we are going to 
call a function to use the push function that the router gives us. So in order to navigate, I will just call another function which we'll create right now called onNavigate. So we'll declare a we'll declare an arrow function called onNavigate. So we'll say const onNavigate is equal to arrow function. And inside this function, whenever we click on this button, that function will be called. So now we want to navigate the user to the dynamic page. So we'll say router.push. Now push is a function and the function that takes the URI, that is the path to which we want to navigate the user to. So it's a function and we obviously call it as that. And since we are going to a dynamic page, we are going to be using the backtick. So backtick slash and now we are going to go to go dollar sign curly braces and then we'll navigate to the title. So anytime we click on that read more button, we are going to push the user to the title or maybe we can also use a slug instead of using the title. So we'll quickly change the title and we'll use slug. So in order for us to use this slug, obviously we need to have a slug in our blog. So we'll quickly go to our index.js and on each blog item, we are going to give it a slug. Now this log will be hard coded for now, but later we'll see how we can dynamically call this log. So we'll say log is equal to first dash blog, and for the second blog, we'll just give it a, a log of second blog. So now we have the log, and if we should go back to our page, and we click on the read more button, we are going to navigate to slash undefined, and that's because we are not passing this log as props to our blog item because remember we are taking that slug from the prop so quickly we we'll say slug is equal to blog dot slug so now we should save our blog item is going to be receiving the slug and we are going to push the user to slash slug so now we go to the first blog and if you go back to home and uh, try the other blog we go over to the slash second blog so this is how to navigate programmatically. So now we are done rendering dummy data on our screen. We can move further to now the ad block page. So inside this page, we are going to show a form, a form we'll be able to use to add some blog and then save to our database. So in order to do that, we can go to components and create ad block folder. Now inside the ad block folder, we'll create a file called addblog.js. So now um, we already have some naming issues. So I'm going to quickly rename this file to be a lowercase a. And then um, we also made the same mistake in our blog item. So I'll quickly rename it to a lowercase b. And I'll say yes to update imports. So that happens in the pages folder. So that should be a lowercase b just to be consistent in our application so now in the add block page i'm going to call name a function to write the jsx a function will call block form actually let's call it um add block so we'll call this function add block because um actually we use the function to add a block that is for this component so we'll export the default add block so now inside the app block function, we have our JSX. So we are going to return a form. So we'll start by wrapping the component into a form. And the form will have a class name of mw-lg. That is to give it a max width. And also we are going to say width full to be that's 100% of the container. And then inside the form, we are going to have our form controls. So our form controls will be our actual input elements and the label. So we'll start and then we'll having a div and we'll give it a class name of flex and flex wrap. We're also going to give it um, a class name of minus mx dash three. That is to give you some um, margin on the left axis. And also we'll say mb dash six. So now we have um, the surrounding div for our individual form control. 
are going to have a label. Now this label is going to have a class name of block. We're also going to give you uppercase that is to transform the, the text to uppercase. We're also going to say tracking wide and any class name you're not familiar with you can also only you can hover around it to see the actual CSS. We also say text gray 700 that's to give you some gray text and then um, we can say text excess. So we can also style the font by saying font bold. And one last, we can now say MB-2 to give it some margin on the bottom. So now we have our label. Let's write the text for this label. And since we are rendering a, we are going to be adding blog posts. So our blog, our form is going to contain title, image, description, and details. So we can start with the title. So inside this um, label, this inside the form, we are going to render the title, image, description, and details. So inside the label, we can have our title first of all. And once we are done with that, we can now have our input. So we can write our input and let's style our input as well. So our input is going to have an appearance of none. Please hover over it to know the actual CSS in case you're not too familiar with Tailwind. And then we are going to give it a block. Also, we are going to say width full. You know, we have defined the width on the form already. We are going to give it some um, background. So we can say BG gray 700. Actually, let's give it 200. So we can now style the text. So we say text gray 700, so give it class name of rounded. So give it also padding on the y axis of three, padding on the x axis of four. So we're going to say leading tight. So that's what it does, that class name. Also on focus states, we are going to give it um, outline none. So when we focus on the input, we are going to remove the outline. And still on the focus state, the background is going to be white. On type, I say this is going to be of type text. This input is going to be of type text. And then giving it a placeholder, we are going to say title. So now we have um, for the title, let's try to make use of this form in our ad blog page. So now we want to render multi-line JSX and then um, use our ad blog component in our ad blog form. So now we're going to import ad blog from not, not there. So we have to navigate to our components folder and the, inside our components folder by going up to levels, then I'm going to go to the ad blog and ad blog. Since this, the name of our component is ad blog, and the name of this component is ad blog. Actually, React is not going to like that. So, but but let's let's watch and see. So, we need to use fragments so to enable us to write multi-line JSX. So we are going to import fragment from React. So we'll come and wrap our ad block component with a fragment. And then um, below our H1, we are going to say add blog. And if we save this, we obviously see an error because now we, the name of the component and also the name of this um, add blog page is clashing. So let's quickly rename it to blog form. So we'll name, rename it to blog form, yes, to update the import. And also we'll go and then for the file itself, we are going to rename it to blog form.js you say yes and now we can um, change it here as well instead of add blog we can change it to blog form and then use it in um, our jsx as blog form so if we save it this time the error is gone but let's also go and change the file name just to be consistent so instead of using add blog we are going to call it blog form 
So now everything is saved and if we go back to our app and go to the ad block page, we see our phone. Now in order to center it because it's not centered, we need to use MX Auto to center the phone. So we'd we'll go back to our IDE, go to the block form component, and on the form itself, we are going to give it MX Auto. So what this does is give it some margin on its um, auto margin on the X axis to help us center the form. So now we have that for the title. Let's quickly copy and paste that three more times for the image description and the details. So we'll go up and change the text. So where we have title, we are going to change to image. Yes, we are also going to change the placeholder to image. Coming down, next is um, description. So we'll change that to description. And we'll change the placeholder to to description. So for the last one, image, um, I think we have used image before. So we'll just go and check. Yes, we have, and it's meant to be details. So we'll quickly use details there and change the label text to be details. So now if we save and we go back to our form, we now have um, inputs for the title, for the image, the description, and as well for the details. So now we are we're using this form and soon we are going to be able to collect user inputs and now save to database. So now we are going to see how to connect to a database in this course. So that will come up later when we discuss the Node.js. But now to add a button to able to submit the form, I'll just copy the button that we had over there in our blog item page and I'll save it here. So instead of read more this time, I'm going to say submit. And um, we are going to change, instead of blue this time, we're just going to use red. Text red 700, border red 500, and on hover, we'll just change the background to red 500. I think that'll be okay for, for now. And if we save, we go back, we see our button, and this button will be used to submit the form. So we can go back to our home page and everything. For our project, we have a rendering dummy data in our index.js file. And it's time for us to at least um, use other features that Next.js has to offer, which is their server-side rendering. So Next.js has two forms of pre-rendering our page and it gives us static generation and server-side generation. For now, we'll take a look at static generation, that is getting to pre-render our page at build time only. And to do this, we are going to export a function called getStaticProps. Now, this function runs on the server. And inside this function, we can do server-side code, which is send requests to a backend API to, let's say, fetch um, data, which we are going to do. You can also read the file system, and lots, lots more. You can, you can as well securely connect to a database with credentials here because this code will not be built on the client. This is going to be built on the server. So we are going to use get static props. And in order to use get static props, which could also be an async function because here we are going to connect to a database we need to return an object. Now, returning an object inside get static props, this object could be props. Now, whatever we return as props here is going to be passed over to this component as props. Now, as we know it in React, props is an object. And inside these props now, an object, you're going to have the key, which you are going to use to assess the props in our component, and you're going to have the value. For now, we are going to use our array of blog posts. 
Now what this happens is before this page is built, Next.js is going to fetch that data and pass it to this component as props. Now in this home page, we can write props and we are going to have our data passed over to this component. So now instead of mapping through the array, we are going to say props.blogpost. And now we are going to map through the blog post that is coming from get static props as props. So now we can go ahead to log these props to the console. Let's have a feel of what actually is inside these props. So if we open our console and we reload the page. Okay, we get an error, cannot read properties of undefined reading map. And we are getting this error because while accessing the props, we are not using the key that we are getting from our backend API. So for now, what we can do is to remove the props. And then if we, if we should save, that means we are now mapping through our normal array, but we still have our console.log props. If we go back to our server side code, we are going to see the props show up in our terminal. Now you see this is not showing up in the browser. This is actually showing up in our terminal to show that the code, whichever code that we write here runs on the server. If it were to be on the client, we would see it in the browser. But since we are also logging it, logging to the console in the home page, once we flip back to our browser, we are going to see the props. So let's quickly go to our browser and we see our blog post, which is the key that we gave the props in our get static props and we see the value. So what we can do is quickly come back to our component and instead of mapping through our array of uh, posts, we are going to map through the blog post, which is coming back as props. So we would say props.blogpost.map. And now what is, we can remove the console.log and uh, it compiles. If we should go back to our browser now and um, we, we refresh the page, we see that we are now getting this data and this data is actually coming from our server side code. If we should inspect the page source, we now see that we also have the contents of this page pre-rendered for us on the server and sent to our component as props. So this is one of the nice features of Next.js. So we are also we also have to return, not compulsory this time, but revalidate the time to take for our page to be pre-rendered. Now the default is false, but if we should give it a time on every page visit, React is automatically going to pre-render our page for the number of times that we give it. Now, this has to do with um, incremental static regeneration. So if we send it to false, it means that there's no revalidation and the page will be cached until we run our NPM run build. Until the next build, that's when our page is going to be pre-rendered. Like, that's when our page is going to be regenerated. But now if we give it some time, we could say 60 seconds. So if we should say 60 seconds, it means every one minute when request reaches this page, Next.js is going to regenerate our page. That means we build our page on the server. So for this our page where content and just a dummy project um, where contents will not change, we could as well change it to 3000. 600 seconds. That means for every hour, Next.js is going to rebuild our site, like regenerate our site for new data coming from perhaps a backend API. So we can also send it, set it to any time you wish. You could set it to um, 10 seconds or a minute, 60 seconds. You're flexible to send it, set it to any time based on your, the application that you're building. So these get static props and 
let's have a look at get server side props so in order for us to take a look at get server side props i'm going to comment out the code that we have in get static props and then we are going to have get server side props so in our component we are going to export another async function called get server side props now with this function exported from our page what this happens is next.js is going to pre-render this page on every request using the data that is going to be returned from get server side props now in get um, server side props still communicates to database a backend api we can still read the file system we can still um, communicate with the database all those um, backend codes can still happen in get server side props and now we need to also return props now these props will pass to the page component as props just as in get server side props and now in this case we are still going to stick with blog post and we are going to return back our array of blog post now get server side props works like this we have get server side props and we return the props to the component now get server side props also takes in a parameter called context actually get static props also takes in a parameter called context now context is an object that has the following keys it has params now this params is, is used if um, the page uses a dynamic route so it also has access to the request and the response object now we can we can destructure the request and the response from the contents it also has the query string and lots lots more so you can preview data resolve um, url all these things are in the context so with this context we can have as i said earlier access to the incoming request so we can get access to things like the headers the the request methods and uh, and most importantly the request body so that's what um, context gives us access to so we can come up and console.log request and response now once we log this to the console we can um, go back to our page and send the request to localhost 3000 that's our domain so once it reloads we can go back to our code and we see loads and loads of output on our console now this is what the request and the response data contains so you can see stuff like your request.cookies request.methods and all those stuffs request.headers and all those things are coming in from the context parameter so this is what the context gives us access to So I'll just move the console.log and our page should still function as normal because now we are returning our props and then our component has it. So that was just on a side note to give you heads up on get server side props. So I'll comment it out and comment back in our get static props because we are going to be using get static props in this project. And then for readability sake, I will just come up and quickly cut cut out the get st uh, static props from the code. So you also have it in your own code and I'll paste it below our component and I will save right now. So now this is get static props. So if we go back to our page, get, so this is get server side props. If we go back to our page, our page still functions as normal. And everything works. Let's leave the world of static data and try to fetch data from a backend API. So for this, Next.js has us covered. Next.js gives us an API folder that we can have in our pages folder. And inside this API folder, 
whatever we write here is going to be back end code now how do we route in request in this our api folder just as it works in our pages folder any name we give this file is going to be the name we are going to use to access this api route so now for us to access this file we are going to go to slash api slash new blog now any code that leads to slash api slash new blog is going to send the request to inside this file so now we are going to write backend node.js code now with this we don't have to have two separate projects one one for our backend api and one for the front end we are going to have our backend code inside our next.js project now this gives us the flexibility now next.js makes us to have backend code in our front end code so we are going to write server side code and as i said earlier to reach this route we are going to go to slash api slash new blog so in this it's time for us to write our back end code now we're going to write a function normally you can call this function anyhow you like but the convention is to call it handler and we are going to export this function as a default in this file now just as in node.js we have access to the request and the response inside this function so we can do things like checking the request method checking the request body and the request body has automatically been passed so if you're used to node.js you might be used to body parser though body parser has been deprecated and you will need to at least find a way to pass the incoming request body but with this the request body has already be automatically passed so you just have access to the request body and you can start either validating the request body or taking whatever you have from the request body and store in the database now based on storing in the database we want to add a blog so in this our app blog in this our blog form we are going to have the values that we are going to send to database now in this app blog file in our pages folder this is where we want to what send our form values to database so i'm just going to actually write it out we're going to send requests to our back end api to save what our blog to the back end so now what we are going to be doing in our api folder is for us to get prepared for these form values that is going to be coming and when we get the form values we are going to connect to our database and after which we are going to now do what save it in our database so right now we'll go back to our api folder and i'll quickly do a simple validation i'm going to say if request.method is not equal to what post because now we intend on what saving data so i'll check if the request method is not equal to post i will just return and not continue to execute any of the code inside any of the code coming to this what file so now if the request method is post we want to continue now what we are going to do is we are going to destructure the values that we are getting from the form to save in our database so we are going to use object destructuring to destructure it from the request dot body now what are the names of those constants that we are expecting we are expecting an image we are expecting a title we are also expecting not, with, not we, are, we are going to construct our slug by ourselves at this point in time so we would not use the slug that we had coded earlier we are going to expect a description and if we quickly go back to check in our blog we are also going to that is for the blog name the description we are also going to be expecting the details of the blog so these values are the values we want to save in our database and now we are going to create a slog and this log is going to be based on the title and we are just going to say slog is equal to 
title dot to lowercase so we are just going to convert the title to lowercase and then we have a slug so what we can do up next is now work with these details that we are getting and actually go ahead to save it in database but before we do that let's write simple validation and now just as we did for the request method we're going to say if there is no image or if there is no title or if there is no description or details we are just going to return and not execute this code so you can write a more robust check but we'll just work it with this to keep this simple so now let's go ahead and do what make sure that we can communicate with our database from our in this project i will be using mongodb as our database and i'll be using their atlas service which is their cloud storage so that we will not have to install mongodb locally on our system so since i already have a mongodb account i will quickly sign in please if you don't register try for free is um, quite easy to set up so i'll log in, log in with my google credentials and now i'm logged in so we have to configure some things in order to be able to integrate mongodb in our project but first off i will go over to our project and get ready to write the code that would connect to mongodb and for us to start this we need to install a mongodb driver that we are going to use to communicate with our mongodb so that would be npm install mongodb so while mongodb is installing we can as well start using it so i'll go to the top of the file and i'll clear the comments we have there so in order to use mongodb we're going to import something from mongodb and that something is the mongo client so we're going to import mongo client like this from mongodb so with mongo client imported i would uh, quickly wait for the mongodb to install before we continue that is our npm install mongodb which will now help us to be able to communicate with our database so we'll just give it some time okay so now it's done let's go ahead and write our code so we'll say const client which is our connected client we want to use to connect our mongodb database is equals to mongo client dot connect now connect means the mongodb string the uri for it to connect to with this i'll go back to mongodb and let's set up some things so first off we'll go to mongodb access so that's my username bright the user of this um, mongodb database and we can do what click on edit so we auto generate a new password we can copy the password and then we update the user after which we can now also configure more like the network access so now this depends on the system you want to connect to your database so you can add current ip but i'll just leave the default to connect from anywhere so we can go back to our databases and in order for us to connect mongodb to application we are going to click on connect so we click on connect and we are going to click on connect your application now that is the connection string we are going to be needing so i'll just copy this connection string close this um, interface go back to our code and i'm going to paste it inside connect so there are some things we need to change first of the um, database user which is bright we'll leave it as that and then the password as well as the name of the database so we're going to change that to next js crash course so this is the name of the database that mongodb is going to create for us on the fly that we want to connect to so after that we'll go over to next um, database access and we are going to get our password so quickly i'll do this again i'll just click on edit password auto generate a new password copy it update the user then i'll go back to our application and in the placeholder for password i'm going to put the password i just copied so we're going to replace password 
with that password we just copy so that's the password for our mongo client and that is the user that is authenticated with that password so now we have our client the next thing is to say const db is equals to client dot db not like that client dot db so now we have our database next we can go on and create our collection so we say const post collection is equals to db dot collection now we are going to create a collection what's the name of this collection we are going to call it post collection and then we can say const result is equals to post collection dot insert one this will enable us to insert one document into our collection so we're going to insert a document with an image a title a description key and also a details key to match what we are getting from our request.body and also a slog so after that we have our results the next we can close our connection and then we are going to send the response back to the client so we say res.status with a status code of 201 which means yes result a resource has been created on the server and we are going to say json so we'll send back the post as a, we are going to send back the results and also a message which says post created so now we have set up our mongodb connection So after setting up our backend and our database ready to get our form values, let's go back to our page and make sure that we are actually able to receive whatever input that the user has imputed into the form. Now to do this, this is our form, but we would not be submitting it in our component. We are actually going to be submitting the form values in our pages folder at blog. So in order to do this, we are going to create a function and we're just going to call this add blog handler. Now this is going to be an arrow function. So we're going to say is equal to an arrow function. Now inside this form, inside this function, we want to submit the form. Now, but we don't have the form values here. We have it in our block form. So we are going to pass this function as props to our block form component. Now we can go back to our blog form component and retrieve the user input from the form. Now we come down, but in order for us to receive, retrieve the user input, we are going to be using our hooks. So we are going to be using our use ref hook to do what? Retrieve input from values. So we are going to import use ref from React. Now, how do we use the use ref hook? In order for us to use the use ref hook, we are going to initialize a constant and we are going to call use ref as a function. Now, this constant is going to be the name we are going to pass into our input as ref. So for the title, we are going to name it title ref. We are going to copy and paste four of it because now we have the image ref, we also have the description ref, and we also have and need details ref. Now these are references and they would hold the value to whatever the user has imputed into our input. So in order to use it, we are going to say ref is equal to type to ref. Ref just works like get element.id if you're used to vanilla JS. So we'll come to our image and say ref is equal to image ref. Also for our description, we'll say ref is equal to description ref and now for the details we are going to say ref is equal to impute ref now you can also use use state but since we are not going to be using two-way data binding here we are just going to be using references so now these references hold the value to whatever is in our input so now for us to submit this form we should actually make the form the button of type submit and now we are, we can go back to our form and on submission of this form we want to call the function 
So we are going to say on submit is equal to a function. Now we have not written out this function, but we are just going to call it form submit handler. So now we are going to copy that function name, come into our component and create a function called form submit handler. Now this function is going to be called when this form gets submitted and it's going to call with an event parameter. So what we are going to do is we are going to construct an object that is going to fit into what our database is expecting. So we'll say const form data is equal to title, which is equal to titleref.current.value. This is going to give us to the current title what input. We're also going to say image is equal to imageref.current.value. And please, these names have to match what we are destructuring from the request body in the back end. So description is going to be descriptionref.current.value. And for the last one, details is going to be equal to detailsref.current.value. Now we have our form data, but we should not forget to prevent default. So we'll say e.prevent default because HTML automatically tries to what, refresh the page on form submission. But this is a single page application, so we are going to prevent that and let JavaScript submit the form for us. So now we have this function called add block handler pass into our blog form as props. So we are going to be getting it as data. So for now, we are going to console.log data. So we expect data to be this form data that we are going to now pass to the function. So in order to call the function, we are going to receive it from our props and we can actually destructure it. So we can say const add block handler is equals to props. Now add block handler is a function that we are passing to this component as props and a function that takes in an input. So we are going to say add block handler and we are going to call that function. Now we are going to call the function and give it the form data, which is what this object. Now we are passing the form values to this component, to this our add block page. So if we refresh the page, go back to localhost 3000 and if we open up our console quickly navigate to the app blog form and then let's quickly create a form a blog so we are going to give the title as testing image we're just going to say test image for now description we're just going to say node js crash course just dummy data to check out if it is actually working so i hope you love it and i'm going to hit on submit so on hitting on submit we can see the form values being logged to the console so it is these form values we are now going to submit to our backend api to add to our database so we go back to our code that data there is what we'll be using to do what to now send data to our backend api so now we are now we are aware that we are getting this data from our well, component. We'll come back and make this function async and get ready to send this form data to our back end. So we are going to get our response and we are going to await the response. Now you can use any HTTP client that you are familiar with, but for now in this project we are going to be using the fetch API. So now what is the endpoint? The endpoint is going to be the file name of our API folder that is expecting this. So we are going to say slash API slash new blog. So now, just as we have in the pages folder, it is the same for our API folder. So any request going to slash API slash new blog, yes, that request is actually going to go to our API folder and then our new blog file because that is the name. And then we are going to handle the request inside of this file. So now we have our API route. The next thing we are going to do is to configure the request. 
So first we can configure is the request method. So we are going to set it to post because actually our backend is expecting a post request as we have set it up in our API. So the next thing is the body. What is the request body? In this case, our request body is going to be data. That is the form data that is coming from our block form component. So after this, we, need to, we are going to log our response to the console. But we'll not just log it like that. We are going to say response.json. That is unique with um, using the fetch API. Also, the data we are sending, we need to also send it as JSON. So we are going to say json.stringify data. So we need to be explicit as well. Now we are sending the JSON data. We need to also, we can also send, set the content type in the header. So we say headers and then we say content hyphen type and we can set the content type to be application json like this so now what we can also do is we, are, we need to await the response that is coming back so to do that i will cut the response.json from the console.log and i'll quickly create a variable called data and we are going to say await response.json. Now I'm going to console.log data. So this data should be the request that is coming in from our, this data should be the response that we have configured in our API folder. That if we go back to our new block file and we, we scroll down, yes, that response is what we are expecting to be the data, the one with the post and the message. So now if we should go back to our app block form, we are going to save that file. And now for us to be double sure, we'll just reload the page. And now we get an error that data has already been declared. And that's because we, we are getting data as the const the name of this um, parameter of this function and we're also using data twice inside this function so what we can do is to rename that to be response data and we'll copy that and now we'll console.log response data so if we go back to our form and then quickly set up a title we say next.js I've already selected an image from Unsplash. So the description, we can say this is a crash course and then we give the details. So we can say, I hope you love it. And if we submit this form, we wait for our response and actually we get an error. And that error is coming from our API because we are not using the await keyword. We need to await the operation of inserting one document into our database because it returns a promise. So we are going to await this operation and now we save. So we can now go back to our project and try to insert another document. So we'll give it another title, next.js. So I'll quickly go back to Unsplash, right click and copy image address, go back to our project and I'm going to save. So for the description, just quickly say this is a Next.js crash course. And for the details, we say get started with Next.js and we submit. So once we submit this file, we wait for the response and we get the response as we have configured it in our backend. So with message and post. So now with this, we are sending requests in our Next.js project, still our Next.js project, our backend API. So this is one of the flexibilities of Next.js. So let's get started to fetching data and displaying on our screen because previously we are just we just um, completed sending data to our database so now let's leave our, the world of static content let's go over to our database fetch the data that we have there and render it in our components 
For us to be able to do this, we are going to go to our index.js file, which is responsible for res displaying our blog. So now we are going to use get static props. We know that get static props is going to help us to pre-render our page on the server. We are going to send a request to our database, fetch our list of blog posts, and we are going to pass it on to this component as props. So we are going to connect to our client, our database client, and we'll do this by what awaiting our Mongo client. Now Mongo client automatically is imported from MongoDB. So please, if this is not the case for you, import Mongo client from MongoDB. And where we have our Mongo client, we are going to say dot connect. Now connect takes the URI that of the MongoDB database we want to connect to. So I'll just go to our API folder and I'm going to quickly con um, copy the connection that we have over there, go back to our page and I'm going to paste it. Please feel free to put this connection in a utility folder so that you don't have to repeat yourself, which is a bad practice in programming. But just for us to focus on the Next.js part of things, I'm going to keep it as this. So in your project, feel free to do what to device another uh, function to help you for connection. So we're going to say db is equals to client.db, which gives us access to what our database. Now we have access to our database. We want to get access to what our collections. So we are going to say db.collection. And which collection do we want to get access to? So we are going to say next. No, that's not next.js blog. Next.js blog is the name of what the database. But we are going to say post, which is the collection that we created that has the list of what posts. So we're going to say db.collection and then we'll pass post. One other thing we can do is on the client, we can say db.collection and we call what post. So now we are going to change db to what blog post collection because this is what is going to return the blog post collection and we can get rid of that line of code. Now we have access to our blog post collection. Let's now fetch our blog that are inside this collection. And now we are going to do that by saying const blog post is equal to await because we have to await this operation. Remember, get static props is an async function. And then we can say await blog post collection dot find. Now find is going to return all documents if we don't pass it a filter. So we are going to convert those documents to what? An array. So if we hover over an array, we are going to see it does what? It returns an array of documents. So now our blog post is having our array of blog posts we want to render on the screen. So using JavaScript ES6, the key of the, the, of the object matches it. So we'll quickly come to our component and we are going to get rid of the static blog post we have there. And here you have it. We are fetching our blog post from our backend and we are passing it over to our component as props. So now if we save it, we are going to go back to our front end and if we reload, we get an error because it says underscore ID return from get static props. And for us to be able to get a clear hint of this error, what we are going to do is console. We are going to first of all, close our con uh, connection to our database, which is a good practice. So after closing our connection, what we are going to do before returning blog post or still returning blog post, we are going to log blog post to the console. Now we are going to see the blog post that is returned from the back end. So we open our terminal because this is our server side code and we wait for it. Yes, we see our inserted blog on the terminal. And now we see why we are getting that error because underscore ID is a new MongoDB ID object an object ID with what a string. So we need to transform that ID in order for us to stop seeing the error that we are getting on our front end. And in order for us to do that, first of all, uh, we can say blog post and I'll just get rid of the console.log since we are sure we are getting back our list of blog posts. And I'll say blog post.map. And map in JavaScript is going to do what give up, give us access to each individual blog. So we are going to have access to it and we are going to return. Now I'm going to use parentheses 
because I want to return an object. So the parenthesis is like I'm returning what? An object. An object that has a title, which is going to be equal to blog.title. Not that. We're going to also return a description, which is also going to be equal to blog dot description and i'll quickly fix the error we have there so after the description we are also going to return an image so the image is going to be equal to blog dot image and after that we are going to return what an id so remember we had what blog dot underscore id now this underscore id is what an object and we are going to convert it what, to a string so we'll say to string and we we'll call it so the next thing is the slug which is going to be blog dot what slug now with this we are getting rid of what that underscore object id that was causing the error and if we should go back to our front end and it reloads now we see the, the blog post that we inserted in our last word operation. So if we go back now to add a new blog post to test it once more. So we have our title, main stack. I'm just going to put an image I got from Unsplash. So a description, we can say learn the next JS with MongoDB and ExpressJS. So the details, we can say this is a crash course on men men stack so i will submit okay actually it's submitted but we don't have a hint to be able to know if it's submitted so in order to do that we are going to navigate the user to the home page after form submission so i'll go back to our pages folder and in our ad blog index.js we are going to use our use router hook to be able to navigate to the home page. So I'm going to import the use router from next router. Remember that the use router is built into Next.js. So I would, um, after importing the use router hook, we'll initialize a constant called router, and we are going to say is equal to use router. We are going to invoke the word function. So instead of logging to the console after getting the response from the database we can say router.push and we're going to navigate the user to the home page which is just what slash so if we should go back to our home page and we go to home we actually see the document that we inserted just right now on our front end and that document is being fetched from get static props inside our next.js application so you see that the slug is also working, which is what slash next.js that we constructed. And if we should go back to our home page, so we navigate to home and we go to the other blog and we click on read more. We actually see the, the slug, but now we are having um, the percentage sign there because we have a space in the url and spaces are not allowed in url so in order for us to fix that we can uh, quickly go back to our backend api and construct uh, our slug in another way so instead of just calling our slug and calling the title to lowercase we are going to use the javascript built-in replace method and we are going to replace any white space that we have in our title. We are going to what? Replace it with a hyphen. So we say we give space and then comma. And we are going to, in uh, quotation marks, we are now going to call hyphen. So we are going to replace any white space with a hyphen. And in order for us now to quickly test this out one more time, we are going to test this log. Also test programmatically navigating the user to the front end. We are going to come back to our ad blog page and we are going to quickly fill out another blog post. So this is going to have a title of MongoDB and an image. We are still going to stick with that image. We are going to quickly give it a description. We can say MongoDB is a NoSQL database like this. And then for the detail, we can now say learn more about MongoDB. 
So now, once we click on submit, we are going to be what? Push to the home page once it's done. And now we are at the home page. We are going to scroll down and we see the document that we just inserted. So once we click on read more, take a look at the URL bar and we now have Mongol hyphen DB, but the title is what Mongo DB. So this is how we are using guest static props to do what? Fetch data from a backend and render in our component, in our UI. So it's now time for us to render our blog details page. Now in this page, we have dynamic route. So in order for us to render this page content dynamically, we are going to export another ASIC function, which is called, okay, first of all, we are going to export get static props, but I'm also going to introduce you to another function, which is called get static path, because this page is a dynamic page. And in order for Next.js to be able to pre-build the contents of this page, now for Next.js to be able to pre-render the contents of this page, we need to inform it beforehand the individual path that this page is what expecting. So in order to do this, we are going to export another async function, which is called get static path. And now if we export this function called get static paths in a component from a page, so it has to be in, a, in the pages folder, not in the components folder. So get static path, must be where in the pages folder. But to, to connect, first of all, I'm going to come here and copy our connection, our connection. Please make this what reusable in your own what project. Now get static path from a page that uses dynamic route is going to tell Next.js to statically pre-render all paths. Now the paths are going to be what specified inside get static path. So how are we going to do this? First of all, we have our client connection to our database, but before we continue, let's go on and import what our Mongo client. So we are going to import Mongo client from where? From MongoDB. So now we have our client and we we'll say client.db. And after connecting to our DB, it's time now we go and what? We'll just go back to our index.js and I'll copy our collection connection from our index page. So I'm going to replace it here to make things quicker. So we have our client.db and I'll quickly get rid of um, the other line of code we have up there. So I will just um, highlight and delete it. So now we are connecting to our post word collection. And after connecting to our post collection, let's return the path, the paths that we are going to tell Next.js that this page is going to do what? Render the dynamic routes. So we are going to say blog post dot blog post is equal to await blog post collection dot find. Now in find, we are going to just return what an empty object. We are going to find an empty object. And after that empty object, we are going to configure what needs to be what returned in the options because find obviously returns all documents. But now we want to specify the properties of those documents that we want to what return. Now, in this case, we want to return the ID and we're going to say ID that is equal to what or underscore ID because that's what is used in our what database. I'm going to say equals to one. So what this means is return only our what the ID, return only the ID. That's what this means. And we are going to call it what to array because we are finding all documents. So our blog post is going to do what? have an array of documents which contains only the ID of our individual blog post. So that's what we are now saving in that constant, which is called what blog what post. So after that, we have to return something in get static path as we do in what get static props and also in get server side props. 
what do we need to return? We must return what a path, a path um, key, and a path key is going to do what have an array. Now, to do, in order to do what have an array, we are going to return an array of what path that we want to use. I want to tell Next.js that this page is going to do what be able to render because path has to be what an array. So we are going to map through all the blog posts and inside this blog post, what we are going to do is we are going to return a params object. So we are going to say a params is equal to what and now we have an identifier. The identifier has to match the identifier that we are using in our page, which is going to be slug. So we're going to say slug is equal to what blog post dot what underscore ID and we'll have to call to string like this. So now we are telling Next.js that these are the IDs, the slugs that we have available for this page to be able to do what render. So Next.js is going to go ahead of time and be aware of the different path that is going to be used in this page. So we are also going to have fallback key. So fallback, we're going to set to false. And when any path that is not returned in get static path, Next.js is going to return what a 404 page automatically. That's what fallback false is going to help us to do. So with this, we have informed Next.js of the different um, IDs that we are going to be using in our word components. So now Next.js is aware and is going to go ahead of time, fetch our path, and now load in get static props the, the dynamic word pages that it is going to use to render in our word in our screen. So Fallback is what important, but in our case, we are not using an ID. We are going to be using a slug. So we can quickly come to change our setup a bit. So we are, we are currently returning the blog post underscore ID and to string. So instead of fetching the underscore ID, what we are actually going to fetch is what slug. So let's say slug and then instead of saying blog post dot ID dot to string, so blog post is going to now give us what? Um, not just log, we're going to say, yeah. Slog is then from blog post, we are going to destructure slog. And now we have params is going to be what? Equals to slog. So what that does is it returns only the slog. So in our page, we are going to stick to using slog on our URL instead of what? Using ID. So get static path is going to go ahead of time, fetch the different parts for our component, and inside this async function called get static path, we are going to have what we can now fetch the path for our different uh, pages. So let's not forget to close our client connection. So we'll say client.close. So after setting up our get static path, we now need to go ahead and fetch the data for our individual component. So we are going to export another async function, which is called, so export async function, get static props. And inside this function, this is where we would also do what we have access to the context and now we are going to connect to our database again. So we we'll say blog ID is equal to context dot params dot slog, not ID, because that's what we call our identifier. So we are going to say context dot params dot slog, which is going to now give us the ID that is the slog of the page we are currently on. So now we can use these get static props and send a request to our backend, fetch the details for these props and pass it for this component and pass it over to our component as props. So now we have our ID. 
you can copy the connection again please feel free to make this um, dynamic like make it reusable in a utility folder instead of copying it all the time so i'm still going to copy that again come back to get static props i'll quickly paste it there i'll get uh we have our blog post collection and instead of find where we return only the id so what i'm going to do is uh, instead of returning just this log i would call it blog post and in the find i'm quickly going to get rid of all of that so we'll just use find one because now we want to find one document and we want to find one document that is going to match this log we have there so we are going to our way blog post collection dot find we are going to find by slog which is equal to do which is equal to what our blog id that id that we are receiving retrieving from our params so now we are going to have our blog so instead of calling this um instead of going ahead to call this blog post we can actually change the name to a blog post but first let's close our connection and we are going to return the blog post that we are retrieving as props so we'll say props and then props is equal to what an object an object that has a key of what blog so let's quickly change the name now to blog post so we're going to say blog post like that so in our component we are going to have blog post as props so we can go over and retrieve the identity blog post that we are getting from our back end so we can go over and log it to what to the console console.log props so now we are going to save and if our setup is correct and that you have no typo now it saves So I'll just clear and if we go back to our front end and we'll go to the read more page of Next.js and we open our console, we see object. First off, we see an empty object, but we'll quickly um, clear our console, go back to home and then um, we'll open our console. Don't know why I closed it. We click on read more again. Now we get an error that we have an error that get static props has already been declared. Okay, we have um, we have declared get static props twice in this component, maybe somewhere down there. Yes, and get static props has to be used only once in a component. So we are, I'm quickly going to get rid of the second get static props we have there. Check that um, everything is everything else is okay, and if we go back to our front end it reloads we click on read more we wait for it to fetch okay now we still have an error because of the id so in blog post we also need to transform the id that we are sending over to our component that error is um at least we are now familiar with that error we have we have seen it before so we are going to return uh, an object as props now with title is going to be blog post dot title and also description is going to be equal to blog post dot description let's quickly format format the response we are getting so we can also format the detail we we'll say details is equal to blog post dot details and then we say image is equal to blog post dot image and then most importantly we are not returning the id so if we should go back and we reload because the id was returned that's why we're getting the error but this time around we are not returning the id if we reload and we see our blog post that we are fetching from the back end in our console 
So now that is the blog post for Next.js. We just return the description, details, image, and title. So you can see how we are using Next.js to dynamically render our individual blog content. So if we click on the main stack, read more, we also see that it has gone and fetched the details of that. So now we are going to use the detail and display a card in our user interface for each individual blog item. So we are still going to make, make use of the blog card that we created earlier to render our component JSX. So now we are displaying, we are fetching the details for each individual blog item, each individual blog post. Let's go ahead and render them in our blog details page. That is our slug page. Now to do that, we are going to use fragments because now we want to return multi-line JSX and we are going to wrap our whole component with fragment that is imported from React. We are going to cut it, our quickly format, and now we have our fragment. So this page is a dynamic page, but before we get to it being dynamic, Let's first have a div with a class name of flex, and we are going to give it flex call to display each individual blog item in column. So now we are going to make use of our components and we'll be using our blog item. So I'm going to say blog item like that. So blog item is imported from our components folder going up to levels and our blog item and then blog item. Looking at our blog item component, these are the props it needs. It needs a slug, details, description, image, and title for it to be able to render on the screen. And we are going to use this. So in order for us to use this in our blog details page, there are some things that we need to change. First of all, we want to use the details. And we are going to give it a class name in a paragraph tag, which is equal to text, Let's just use, um, you can say text purple 400 to give it a purplish text. And we're going to say text base. And inside this paragraph, we are going to render the details of each blog. Now, these details is dynamic because we're also using it in the front page. So we're going to say if details is truthy, we are then going to do what? Render our paragraph. So if we have details, then show this paragraph. Otherwise, the paragraph would not show, which is what we want on our front page. We don't want to show the paragraph in our front page. So we can save that. If we go back to our slug, we are going to give this blog item the component it needs. So we are getting our title, description, details, and image as props. So we are going to quickly refactor it to be a blog to be a blog object and we are going to paste it there. So in our props, we are going to say props.blog to be able to retrieve this object. We'll go back to our component. And now to be able to use it, we are going to destructure. So we'll say const, not square, not like that. We're going to say const curly brace is equal to props. So from props, we are going to what? Destructure blog which is what we called it in our get static prop so blog and now we can go into the blog and destructure each individual item that we have so the title description image and also if you go back and check yes the details so these are what we are destructuring from the blog and we can now say title equal to title, description, we can get rid of the comma, description equals to description, also image is equals to image, and now we are going to give it details. So we say details is equal to details. So what this means is in our individual blog details page, we are going to have the details show. But in our blog item, the detail is not going to show on the home page because we are checking if it's actually receiving the props. So if we go back to our blog details page, we see our purple text in the blog details page. So we can now go back to our blog item. 
Since we are also dynamically showing the blog details, we should also show the dynamically the button because the button will only show whenever we are the home page because we don't want to read more. We are already in the dynamic page to read more. So we'll say if we have details, that means we are in the um, we are in the blog details page, so we don't want to show the button. So we'll now say if no details, yes. Yeah, so if we don't have details, if that is true, then go ahead and show the button. Now this button will also now be dynamic based on if we are sending the details as props. So if we go back, the button is gone. But if we should now go over to our home page, so if we quickly go back to our home page, we can now see that we would no longer see, be seeing the button, we would see the button and also the, um, we would not be seeing the details. But if we go back to our blog detail page, if we should click on read more, we'll wait for it. So if we click on read more, we are not seeing the button and we are seeing the details. So we are now showing our what, blog details page and everything is still working as before our title our image our uh, components everything still works as before so now we are showing our blog details page to wrap this up let's go over and add um, more data information to our page so i'll show you how to add uh, meta information description about each page that we are on for seo so I'll quickly go back to our head tag, which we can write metadata about our website, about our page. And uh, in our head tag, which is important from next head, we are quickly going to give it a title, which will say Next.js Crash Course. So this is the title of our web page, and we can as well add some meta description. So we'll say meta, and which is going to be a self-closing tag. So inside meta, we are going to have a name and the name of this is going to be what description so we are going to say meta name is equal to description now what's the content the content we can say this is um a next year's crash course so with this we have been able to add more description about our page so you can copy this go back to other pages and be able to describe the pages to enable what seo in next.js